So uh, my name is Tani Simiski. I am the extension entomologist with UMass Extension's Landscape Nursery and Urban Forestry Program. And uh, today I am lucky to have with me here uh, Blake Dinius uh, and uh, Larry Dapsis, who I will turn it over to them to introduce themselves. So Blake, do you want to get us started? Sure, Tani. Uh, my name is Blake Dinius. And I work for Plymouth County's Extension organization. And I work primarily educating people on pretty much anything bug related. So it could be a house pest. But right now we're here to talk about ticks, right? So we're going to focus mostly on ticks. And I'm happy to discuss anything that people need, any tick related concerns that they may have. Awesome. Thank you. How about you, Larry? Yes, I'm Larry Dapsis. I'm <clears throat> the entomologist for Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. Um, I'm based in Barnstable, but I cover uh, the entire Cape. Um, as entomologist, I cover ants to yellow jackets. I mean, we, we cover it all. Um, but a, a lot, a big component of my outreach program is on the prevention of tick-borne diseases. Excellent. Thank you both. And yes, uh, your expertise with ticks is the reason why I wanted to talk to you today and um, sort of get your take on the tick season for 2021. I know that we've had sort of reports from the general public as well as professionals who are working outdoors that ticks are abundant this year. So uh, my question, I think I'll start with Blake to maybe answer this, is uh, is 2021 a worse tick year than others or is this typical? Um, what's your take on that? So Tony, it's, it's kind of hard to say actually. Uh, I personally, so I conduct tick surveillance work in and around my county. And I personally have not noticed too much of a difference in terms of numbers of deer ticks. Uh, anecdotally speaking, I have seen more reports and I have seen more uh, ticks collected from American dog ticks. I can't tell you why, but this is just my anecdotal experience, clearly not based in any science. Anything to add to that, Larry? Sure. I mean, the the media has been all over stories about this having, you know, an explosion of ticks and um, and and what's going on. And and what I've been telling the media and people in general is that uh, tick season's always here. Um, what what it is, it's people season. Uh, this is pandemic related. I'm confident that people are trying to avoid cabin fever, they're going outdoors more and more. And so there's been more exposure risk than, than normally. Um, in our six years of surveillance, where we had an EPA funded projects, we had sites, 14 sites on the Cape and the islands. <clears throat> and what we saw over those six years is that tick populations varied year on year, but not by a tremendous amount. Great, thank you both. Um, I'll follow that up with, and it's certainly related, uh, and you've touched on this, but maybe go back to Blake. Uh, what factors influence tick populations year to year? It's a lot of ideas. If you, if you go and you look at some of the research, there are a ton of ideas floating around. And as Larry mentioned, I think a lot of the media and a lot of these kind of almost conspiracy type ideas kind of float around. And there's a, it's a heavy area and active area of research. But living here, what I can say is that living here in Massachusetts, a lot of these concepts like uh, mass years, like number of acorns or the number of the populations of deer don't really apply that well to, to the areas in, in Massachusetts. Um, for instance, a recent study in Maine that was conducted at University of Maine, they found that their submission of nymphal ticks increased with deer density up to about 13 deer per square mile. But living here in Massachusetts, we have anywhere from 10 to 15 deer per square mile all the way up to 80. So the, the, the increases are, they, if they stop at 13 and we have all the way up to 80, then, I mean, we're not really going to see these huge fluctuations that they see in some of these studies. Thank you. Anything to add to that, Larry? Sure. We see something similar in that um, uh, deer, you can't blame Bambi for everything here. Uh, and when we look at tick populations, say, on the Cape versus Nantucket, uh, Cape Cod has a deer density of about eight per square mile. Um, Nantucket has 50 per square mile. 
do we see five times higher density of tick on Nantucket versus Cape Cod? No, they're actually the same. So there, there are other animals involved. It's a complex ecosystem, a lot of moving parts here. I think that certainly is what makes it so difficult and yeah. makes maybe prediction year to year nearly impossible because just as you said, there's a lot of moving parts. It's very complex and there's not one single factor, right? That's uh, driving tick populations or even driving you know, human tick interaction. <laughs> um, so very interesting. And I'm learning something. I didn't realize that some areas of Massachusetts had, did you say 80 deer per square mile? That, that's what the, that's what the, you know, that's what the state reports up to 80 deer per square mile. <laughs> it's wild. Correct. I mean, there are a ton of moving parts. Even people even look at things like um, the Palmer hydraulic drought index and different weather patterns and, and everything, but who, you know, how do you really know? How can you really tease apart some of these subtle increases? You have so many moving parts. Exactly. Awesome. Well, great uh, information, guys. I think my next question would be, and I kind of giggle when I think about this, but you, you can't spell tick without ick, right? <laughs> and other than that ick factor, why should we avoid tick bites? Can you remind folks why they, they really want to avoid interactions with tick and maybe start again with, with Blake and go to Larry? Um, if we, you know, if we, if you don't know this by now, ticks harbor a number of different pathogens <clears throat> and a lot of them are just not fun to do. They, they range from mild nuisance to they can be treatable all the way to life-threatening illness and uh none of the thing you don't want any to mess with any of these really agreed great larry sure i mean with deer ticks um <clears throat> they there's five different pathogens that cause disease that we know of uh their their guts are certainly might tons of microbes. They're, they're little microbial cesspools. And are there things that ticks are transmitting to us, making us sick that we don't know what the causal agent is? Highly possible. Um, the, is it just five diseases for deer ticks just because we have five fingers on our hand? Rather doubtful. Scary stuff. So more to learn, right? <laughs> and more reasons to, to avoid them. That's for sure. All right, so all of that said, what is the number one most important thing that people can do to protect themselves from ticks? And I'll just let either one of you respond. Uh, I think it's important that um, <clears throat> when people come in from an outdoor activity, first thing you do is throw your clothes in the dryer for 20 minutes. That's all it will take to kill any ticks that are on you. And, and then that's a good opportunity for a tick check. Um, there, I spent a lot of time coaching uh, people uh, on the importance of repellents, uh, both repellents for skin and my go-to protection is permethrin treated clothing and footwear. That is the most effective tool in the box we have. Thanks, Larry. Anything to add, Blake? Um, if, if there's only one thing that people do and that's it, um, my big thing that I like to recommend are tick checks because nothing we do, like you get, I, I meet people and they range all the way from someone who might not want any chemicals at all to maybe your all natural crowd that only likes organics all the way to people who would do anything to stop at no cost to prevent tick bites and use whatever they have in, the, in, the, in their arsenal. Um, the one thing that we always have to do regardless of what we use is follow up anything we do with a tick check. So if you just get in the habit I mean, in the time that I've been talking to you right now, you could have done a tick check. It's really just that simple. It takes, it's shorter than watching a YouTube video. It's shorter than checking the comment section in Facebook. It's shorter than all these things that we tend, shorter than sitting at a stoplight. And all these things we do in our daily life, we do have time to do these things. And so it's just a matter of getting into that habit. And part of it, I think, is that people are afraid of what they might find. But if we find the tick, it's much better than not finding the tick. That is for sure. I was going to say, I'd rather find it right away when it's still small versus when it's fully engorged and even grosser. <laughs> but sure. and, and one of the things I tell people is don't rely just upon your eyes. Uh, your, your fingers are very sensitive to small bumps where you might not have normally mm. felt something before. So 
um, tactile uh, examination is is very effective. Especially in, under hair and all that. <laughs> or, or lack thereof. Or <laughs> It's easy on me. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh, well, thank you both. I, I I really appreciate it. And and uh, again, to circle back around, other than my jokes about the ick factor, we know this is a very serious topic, and absolutely want to impress upon folks the importance of tick checks and protecting yourselves, especially if you're working outdoors every day or even just playing outside for a little bit, going for a hike with your family. Do that tick check. Um, all right, so lastly, I want to say that UMass Extension is super excited to welcome uh, Larry and Blake on Tuesday, June 8th for a Tick Education Day. So we'll be hosting a, a live webinar where we will have our uh, interviewees here present again. And we do hope that folks will join us because they'll both be giving hour long uh, presentations about ticks and topics that we really need to learn more about. So all of that said, uh, in 10 words or less, why should folks sign up to attend? Because with ticks, one bite can change your life. How about you, Blake? With the right knowledge, tick bites are preventable. Perfect. I love it. Thank you both. Thank you so much for your time today. And again, uh, we hope that folks will join us on Tuesday, June 8th. And if you're looking for event registration inf information, we'll include that link at the end of, of today's little interview. All right, thanks again, and we'll be seeing you around. Bye.